Uh, hello, my name is Siva Siva Palan. I'm at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, where I'm a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. We are here to interview uh, Professor Eric Wood of Princeton University. Uh, I have known Eric for over 35 years. I first met him when I arrived at Princeton to start my PhD. He was my uh, supervisor at the time, and then I worked with him as a postdoc for, for the further two years. We are here at the European Geophys Geosciences Union annual meeting, and where uh, I was uh, given the opportunity to, to interview Eric. So thank you, Siva. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. agreeing to do this. You've been a longtime friend, and uh, I want to thank uh, the EGU. I want to thank uh, uh, other people who have arranged to have these history of hydrology activities going on. And so it's a great honor to be asked to be interviewed. Right. Thank you. Um, so Eric, I have known you from 1981, but I think that, and, and, and your, your life, your career is almost like an open book to me, but still, you know, you go back some ways before that. So I'd like to know more of your childhood uh, starting in Vancouver. Okay. So I grew up in Vancouver. Um, it was, a, it really was sort of a wonderful life. Right. I went skiing, I went boating, mm. I, I, I studied, I, uh, I partied, I did all these things that you do as, a, as an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I went to UBC. I went to UBC mm -hmm. in civil engineering, mm -hmm. which is a very classic, uh, you know, 32 hours of classes a week, mm -hmm. uh, do the problem sets, do the mm -hmm. um, lot of, of right. structures, structures, right. Not, not much in yeah. the way of environmental engineering. Mm -hmm. And then when I finished, mm -hmm. I thought, what am I going to do? And uh, I thought, well, maybe I was quite interested in uh, systems analysis. Right. And I thought, maybe I'll go and study systems analysis and uh, statistics and things. So I applied to a number of schools. Um, I was, in fact, uh, accepted at, at Illinois. Oh, yeah. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided that I would go to... MIT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I went to MIT. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it. Uh, when I went there, mm -hmm. I was in a program that was sort of a systems analysis type program. Right. But my research was basically in hydraulics. Hydraulics. Yeah. Hydraulics. Mm -hmm. It was under mm -hmm. Frank Perkins mm -hmm. and uh, Brendan Harley. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's where my funding came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but I I did all this sort of, you know, decision analysis and right. all these sorts of mm -hmm. things. And uh, we did some interesting stuff. Uh, it um, the students there were great. Made made lots of friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't find the. Uh, you know, it, it, it just went by so quickly. Right. Okay. Right. I uh, for my so that was my master's was mm -hmm. with Frank Perkins, and then my PhD. I decided um, that I would see if um, Ignacio Rodriguez Aturbi would be my right supervisor. Mm -hmm. And then about that time, he had. Uh, I remember I went home for the mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. I came back and he wasn't there. Okay. Because he had... Uh, he had visa problems and he right. went back to mm -hmm. Venezuela mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe once or twice a semester, maybe mm -hmm. no, once or twice a year, maybe mm -hmm. once a semester. Mm -hmm. He would come back mm -hmm. and uh, to, to be honest, my thesis was uh, there were some good papers but... Um, it could have been. It could have been stronger. <laughs> it could have been stronger. <laughs> it could have been stronger. Um, 
because I know that you wrote this uh, beautiful paper in 1976 that uh, won you the uh, the Houghton Award, uh, the, the role of soil moisture in flood frequency. That's right. But um, so. Uh, so you, you have done some really good work that gave you award, and you are still not satisfied. You could have yeah, done better. That mm -hmm. that paper yeah. came to me one day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as an idea, right? And uh, I, in within literally within a month, it mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. you know, the work was done. I just mm -hmm. focused on it. right. The other paper, which is very interesting, mm -hmm. is I did. So we were looking at. Um, Bayesian analysis of flood frequency mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and have multiple models. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And came up with, in fact, and with all the proofs mm -hmm. of, of how you would weight them mm -hmm. with the likelihood yeah. functions yeah. of which models. Right. Basically, it was Bayesian mm -hmm. multi model selection stuff that is now. Now, very commonplace. Uh, and, and mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. has a, a big uh, mm -hmm. uh, reputation for coming up with mm -hmm. uh, yeah. this. But that's fine. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, yeah. one of the people mm -hmm. at MIT who mm -hmm. was very, um, still a very good friend, is Ralph Keeney. Right. And Ralph Keeney, decision analysis. Mm -hmm. Ralph Keeney. Yeah. Uh, was very close to Howard Rafa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Howard Rafa was named in uh, 73, yeah. 74 as the first director of YASA, the oh, National yeah. Institute for Applied Systems. Okay. Now, so that's how you, that's you right. had the connection to now move to Vienna for two years, two or three years. To that's right. YASA. And, and so I was talking to Ralph, and uh, Ralph... And Howard had been talking. They had to fill all these mm -hmm. positions. Right. And um, I said, well, we'd, you know, we'd like to go to mm -hmm. to Vienna for mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years. Right. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why not? I've mm -hmm. never been to Vienna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so uh, I went there in the water program. Mm -hmm. Again, we're mostly doing sort of systems so stuff. So continuation or even more most, most specialization on the systems side? Systems. On the system side. The systems yeah. side, but mm -hmm. um, we did, um, so it was transformative in okay. the sense that I made a lot of very good friends. Connections. I had, yeah. had some good ideas mm -hmm. and... Uh, mm -hmm. And it was great. Um, I recruited mm -hmm. to come Andras Solzinaj. Yes. Oh, okay. And we had the idea uh, to do uh, data simulation right. for, flood, for flood flows. Yeah. And we went down and worked with Ezio Tadini. Yes, from Italy. From yeah. Italy, we went down to... Um, Pisa, yeah. We spent three months there, I think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, working. He was then at IBM Pisa, right. mm -hmm. and uh, worked down there with him. Yeah, um, met lots of, of good people. Mm -hmm. um, so I met Pete Lokes. Pete Lokes. From Pete Lokes. He yeah. was visiting mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kuni Takeuchi from Japan. From Japan, mm -hmm. he had just finished doing a postdoc mm -hmm. at uh, Colorado State. Yeah, uh, and we went as part of this. Mm -hmm. Ezio was close to Enda mm -hmm. <coughs> O'Connell. Yeah, Enda O'Connell, mm -hmm. who was then at the Institute of Hydrology. Right. We spent the summer there doing some. Mm -hmm. Data simulation modeling, yeah. uh, statistical modeling for, for this, mm -hmm. and I've remained. So, close. would you say the systems, the the kind of work that you were doing, was the the frontier area of research in hydrology at the time? Yes, no one was doing mm -hmm. data simulation. Right, right. No one was was merging mm -hmm. uh, these models. Mm -hmm. and in fact, we had a workshop mm -hmm. that ended up with a, a book on on. Um, on data, data simulation, right, right, in there. Mm -hmm. um, 
So then after a few years, yeah. And you went to cup a position at MIT. At, no, I no. took up a position at oh, sorry, Princeton. Princeton. I'm sorry, yeah. I mean, I'm well, say. moved to Princeton. Mm -hmm. Have to give a lot of credit to George Pinder. George Pinder was the director of the okay. water program. Right. And I had, I don't quite know how I first visited mm -hmm. Princeton. Right. And he decided that I would be a good young faculty member. It wasn't mm -hmm. like it is today. They. Mm -hmm. There's 250 applicants, they go through them all, they mm -hmm. come down with mm -hmm. this and come down with this. And, mm -hmm. You know, it was much, life was a little simpler then. Right, right. Some people would say less fair, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So I went to Princeton. Yeah. And then um, in the beginning, I think I was, again, doing... Um, you continued doing the systems work. At the some systems work yeah. and... and mm -hmm. Uh, but looking at things like drive flood frequency, from, from frequency mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. some, um, um, you know, it's hard for me to to think back on all the yeah. stuff I was I I, 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 I remember scaling. Uh, that's about the time that I arrived. Arrived. Then you were transitioning from the systems. You had students who were doing systems, and then you had students now beginning to work on processes and... Yeah, you had um, Charlie Hepson and myself and uh, then others followed. So there was yeah. a transition that set the time when you had contact with Keith Bevan? Mm -hmm. Well, on my first sabbatic leave, I went yeah. to Institute of Hydrology. Right. And the reason I went there, mm -hmm. I went there, um, Jim Wallace yeah. went there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then for about three or four months, mm -hmm. um, Dennis Letmar went. Okay. So you and we were mm -hmm. revisiting the flood studies report. UK flood studies report. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how to improve it. And so yeah. we were there. But during that time mm -hmm. I was there, um, Keith was at the Institute of Hydrology. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about process. Right process mm -hmm. stuff. And that sort of got me thinking about doing processes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jim Wallace was another yeah. uh, wonderful in influence. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the statistics that was going on there with um, John Hoskins and yeah. uh, fractional yeah. uh, differencing. That's right. All, all of that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then um, when I went back from that, that's mm -hmm. about the time you came, mm -hmm. we s started to do this sort of combination yeah. of um, processes, but in fairly simple models. Simple models, with, yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right. And then, uh, and during that time when we were looking at all that, came up with the idea of um, scaling. Remember we, that's right. We um, did this, mm -hmm. this, um, Small catchment. Yes, we broke it into many mm -hmm. little, mm -hmm. and we started to say, well, "What would happen if we started to yeah. average across this?" Right. That, and that first paper was done for a U.S. Japan uh, conference in in, uh, Jap in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Yeah. In Hawaii. Yeah. I never thought at the time mm -hmm. that the the impact, and I I said, one square kilometer. That's what the scale. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yeah. Which is which held for a long time. Yeah, it, it, did, it did. It did. Yeah. And so there was a lot of stuff on scaling. The work you did on on scaling. Yeah. Was remember you did all all that work on um, flood frequency and scaling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one of the really great papers that you led mm -hmm. was looking at the uncertainty in the flood frequency curve yeah. as you went up in magnitude right and at at the top end it's all controlled by rainfall that's right and at the bottom end um it's it's all sort of controlled by the catchment, catchment scale that, yeah. and in the middle mm -hmm. it's it's a combination of wetness right and that led mm -hmm. to a lot of uncertainty in yeah. the middle part, middle part. Mm -hmm. and 
there was a huge potential to, I think, to take that work and expand it more, yeah. looking at actual mm -hmm. data. Of course, data, getting data in those days was harder than today. Correct. Today yeah. you can get up. Yeah. I think there's still a lot to be learned by yeah. looking at that, even though you had a very simple model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could take much so more comfort. I want to ask you a question both on the research side, but also on the research supervision side. But on the research side, you, you went from systems to process to scaling, and and you could have continued on into flood frequency and so, along the lines of what Jan is describing. Yeah. Well, but you took a different turn. Is that correct? You went from process to to re, spatial scale and remote sensing. So how did that uh, well, uh, transition happen? How did that happen? So Robert Gurney, yeah, um, who was at Goddard, mm -hmm. and I can't quite remember how I was introduced to Robert. Whether it was through the friends at the Institute of Hydrology or mm -hmm. something. Anyway, Robert and I, mm -hmm. Robert got me involved in uh, the planning for the NASA's Earth Observing System. And I, right. mm -hmm. he wanted someone from the hydrology yeah. community on the, he was, at that time he was the head of the, yeah. of the hydrological sciences branch mm -hmm. on the um, oversight Mm -hmm. the, the sort of main mm -hmm. um, committee mm -hmm. of which underneath there yeah. were sensor committees. Right. So so he got me on there. Mm -hmm. We proposed with other people, Ted Engman and others, to mm -hmm. do yeah. the sh shuttle right. soil moisture mission. Yeah. Yeah. And that it just it just grew. Was it hard to move into that area? Well, there's uh, a lot of ignorance. Virgin, virgin territory and, you know. There's a lot of ignorance. That's right. <laughs> that Eric Wood had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it took a lot of effort you know, to hard work. It, it took effort and it, and it mm -hmm. took good, some good students. Good students and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. risky too, you know, if uh, how, how this will turn out. You, we had sessions at AGU mm -hmm. in remote sensing and yeah. maybe six people would show up. Right, right. Or seven. Now yeah. you have sessions in remote sensing and the whole room is filled up. Correct. I mean, it really mm -hmm. has changed. Yeah. Um, so, sure, you carried on that, uh, that to this, uh, to yeah. this end. Uh, yeah. And it took a lot of courage, probably, because it's, it's a risky business well, to go into a new area. Uh, but it was interesting. Yeah. I mean, um, it's always risky to, to go into an area, but I never gave up my old area, mm -hmm. I didn't sort of close the door. Right, right, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. I would always sort of start a new activity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and keep some current activities yeah, happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, about 1990 or mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, Dennis, so we had done the field work in five. Five, five, five I remember that, yeah. Five. That was the first. Um, mm -hmm big NASA field program, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, we were out there doing field work. And then Dennis and I mm -hmm. um, got together in an in a interesting way. Mm -hmm. um, we were asked, I was asked, mm -hmm. to look at whether Love Canal yeah. could be could be re could they sell the land and people could right. rehabilitate it okay. and go in and mm -hmm. live there. Mm -hmm. And so what would be the statistics? Mm -hmm. You know, what, the sampling design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm gonna go and look around and I asked Dennis, Dennis, would you like to do mm -hmm. to work on this with mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And so we did a lot of work on um, on sampling design yes. for Love Canal um, and had a bunch of rules. Go out there, take this many samples, mm -hmm. this would determine whether you could mm -hmm. move back in or not. And that started my collaborations with Dennis. Right. 
and then we started, we're interested in land surface models that will go into a climate model. Yeah. And right now, they didn't have any mm -hmm. good land surface models, yeah. but all the hydrology models didn't have any energy. Right. To it. Okay. Yeah. There was there were just water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. models, mm -hmm. and so his student uh, with Steve Burgess, yeah, uh, Xu Liang, yeah, built Vic. Yes. And um, that that led to all that development. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. And. Then we started to do well. We do data simulation with Vic. So con connecting back to the connect connecting back. Yeah, connecting okay. back to it. Did you, would you say that the scale work that you did earlier gave you the confidence to go to larger scale? In other words, uh, instead of going back to Richard's equation yeah. and so on, that you, you that you had that inner belief that that models can be developed at at some great scale. And can work and they extend to global scale. And you and you shouldn't. I think it did, mm -hmm. and I think it also mm -hmm. indicated that um, if you go down mm -hmm. and look at um, at Richard's equations yes. and very small scales, mm -hmm. uh, that the uncertainty in the parameters, right? Or if you randomize mm -hmm. the parameters, mm -hmm. I mean, you did a mm -hmm. beautiful, yeah piece of work, when you randomize mm -hmm. the parameters, mm -hmm. the response yeah. looked just like the simple infiltration. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so that sort of showed, mm -hmm. well, if you want to be at those scales, you should think about having mm -hmm. these simpler models That's right. and not having these mm -hmm. um, models which you yeah. basically can't parameterize. Right. Too much uncertainty. I want to come back to the... The, the students that you had, you know, a whole generation of students going from 1974 to, to now, yeah. um, obviously they all played a, an important role in, in, in all the work that you have done. So, so maybe say a few words about how, um, what they contributed in the first instance, but also how, you, how did you manage these uh, you know, brilliant students that you had along the way? Get them to do the work that eventually get to. To, yeah. to be honest, yeah, I have been blessed. Right, you know, at a school like Princeton, you get mm -hmm. these fantastic students mm -hmm. applying, mm -hmm. and uh, they were. I mean, there's two parts. One is that they 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 are very bright, mm -hmm. but they need they need mentoring. Yeah, they need uh, they need. To be taught how to do research. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go look at um, the early paintings mm -hmm. of uh, right. of artists, yeah, yeah, even Picasso. Right. Picasso did fantastic classical portraits. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't wake up and say, "Oh, I'm going to do cubism." Right. Okay. It evolves, and and mm -hmm. you so someone you have to basically. Help them learn how to do research. Did you? Hear it's a learned. It's a learned. It's a learned skill. Learned skill. Your style of supervision of students is it? You you hold them by the hand and sort of help them along, or would you present them an idea and then say give them the freedom? What what is the style that you would normally adopt? The style mm -hmm. I adopt, and I and I think I've done this for quite a long time, but I can't quite remember all the right. details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They come in, mm -hmm. they're going to be with me for five years. Yes. They take their qualifying examinations after two years. Mm -hmm. First of all, you get a sense of what they want to work on mm -hmm. because they apply and they say, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what they want to do makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So you basically say, Here's, here are some areas that you can work in. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and you agree on an area that they're going to work in. Mm -hmm. And then you give them material to read, mm -hmm. and you say, come with some science questions. Okay. Some science or science engineering questions mm -hmm. that you would like to work mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And they come in with, you know, 
oh, I want to build a model to do this. Right. No, no, no. That's not a question. That's, right. That's not a question. That's a tool that you will need to develop so you can answer the question. Okay, so that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because uh, so you, 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 you see, you never say a method is you focus on the method but for more on the questions. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, you may work on a method if you're building a sensor. Right, right. Okay, but we didn't build it. Mm -hmm. So you would, and so you would iterate and mm -hmm. you would say, mm -hmm. write down write down your your science questions and, and say, how are you going to address it? And I said, you're going to go and write two or three pages. Mm -hmm. Here are the questions I want to start looking mm -hmm. at. Here's the data that I want to mm -hmm. do. These are the methods I want to use. This is what I think I want to do right now. I tell them it's going to take a number of iterations yeah. before yeah. we're happy with that. Right, right, okay. And then you start. I said it's going to change it. Or when you get lost in what you're doing, mm -hmm. you go back to this and read it and see yeah. if you're on track or not. And so that sort of mm -hmm. mentoring is yeah. what I've done. And sometime in their second year, yeah. end of the second year when they do their qualifying exams, they should start taking ownership. Right, okay. of their problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And so that means is that instead mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. coming in, so I meet with all my students once a week. Once a week. For an, an hour. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then I have a group. I remember group. during my time you had always had an open door. Yeah. I could always come in. If you're not on, not on the phone, I can always walk in. Yeah. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. they would, at some point, mm -hmm. instead of me telling them, yeah, they tell me. Correct. Sometimes they come in and say, "I'm really stuck. I don't know what to do." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, I, and, and you talk about it, and you, I suggest mm -hmm. potential paths. Do you? The, 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 I'm, I'm trying to now compare you at the beginning of your career as a professor, and now at the end, almost at the end of the career, you have built all this infrastructure of research in the sense. The whole history of doing things, models, data, all these yeah. things are there. So the way that you manage students now, is it different from the day, the way that you manage students at early stages of your career? Well, I don't think I was quite as organized mm -hmm. in the early part of my career thinking, mm -hmm. what's the science question, what's the science question? Mm -hmm. I think it was there. You, you were... You received the the, the mm -hmm. advice I, I yeah. gave. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's changed. I think so that still, the tools still fresh. Uh, the, yeah. the way it starts. The tools are still there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. My understanding mm -hmm. of how of how they use these data sets, mm -hmm. I have an idea of the understanding, but I can't right. do the work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So when you, yeah. Uh, when you when you train students. Um, do you train them one on one uh, with the skills, or actually you use classes to teach them? You know, what role is teaching? What, what does teaching play in, in the way that you train your students? Well, Formal teaching, I'm talking. Yeah, about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, most of it happens one on one. Right. Generally, the courses are more uh, are, are broader. Mm -hmm. The broader, they're they're more accessible to uh, a range of students who might be supervised by other faculty. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes you know you end up having discussions mm -hmm. in classes mm -hmm. that um, someone will pick up something and they'll go and and, yeah. and write a paper. Mm -hmm. As part of their dissertation on it. Right. So, okay. you know, Princeton is a very small school. Yes. The classes are small. Right. A lot of departments have almost no graduate classes at all. It's right. all one on one mm -hmm. mentoring. Mm -hmm. It's a very mm -hmm. different place in a big state school. Right. Okay. Want to. Um, um, I want to sort of talk a little bit about, I mean, for the, for the general audience, the kind of methods you use in your research. I mean, you know, you, you know in hydrology we can do field work, modeling, yeah. fundamental work, theoretical work, you know, sort of 
what's the mix of uh, methods that you, you, you have used over your career? Well, in general, most uh, there's been a lot of, mm -hmm. of, of modeling work, obviously. Right. But with the remote sensing, especially the soil moisture remote sensing, right. okay. um, we've done a lot of field work from mm -hmm. all these field campaigns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, less so now mm -hmm. than, than, than we did in the past. Mm -hmm. Every summer or every other year when they had these, we mm -hmm. would, three, four, my students would go out, mm -hmm. yeah. dig dirt. Okay. Okay. Dig dirt and see what it's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's nice to get out there mm -hmm. and do that. Right. Okay. You okay. really, it's mm -hmm. good for the students. Mm -hmm. They really need to know mm -hmm. what, what it's like to go out there, mm -hmm. what the data looks like. Yeah. Um, so we had, we had, it was, it was important. Yeah. Just, um, just reflecting over your career, I mean, also I'm imagining young, early career scientists listening to this conversation. Um, you've, over your 40 year career, you've covered a lot of different teams. And uh, did you know that you would you end up here at the beginning? It was, was it preordained that you would end up here when you've actually already started? Here being? Being where, what the kind of work that you're doing, the core the achievement. Was it preordained with the direction of your research? No. It's, you know, you have ideas, you start start on right. them, they either mm -hmm. expand right. or, or they don't. If there's, I mean, a really good example mm -hmm. is um, the work that we're doing now in hyper-resolution. Right. right. So, uh, I had got money Mm -hmm. within Princeton to have a workshop. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. I brought in mm -hmm. um, oh, a dozen people, mm -hmm. 15 people. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Dennis Lettmar thought I was absolutely yes. insane mm -hmm. to think about modeling at globally, yeah. Or con or continentally or yeah. regionally. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, but Dennis, during this workshop, said, well, you know, we should go write a paper about what we've discussed. Right. Okay. So we wrote a, a paper that was in, in uh, WRR. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the next year or so, mm -hmm. Nate Cheney right. applied yeah. and came and we sat down, starting, you know, what do you, what do you want to work on? And he said, well, you, you know, I'd like to work on some land surface modeling. Right. Okay. And he came from a sort of a mathematics, okay. um, hydrology mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. at Berkeley. And so I said, well, that's good. Why don't you do some stuff in, um, in uh, this hyper-resolution? Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. put that way. And um, I had no idea. I had no idea how it was going right. to okay. be funded mm -hmm. exactly. It got funded by... Mm -hmm bringing together bits of pieces mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. And it would never have happened without mm -hmm. Nate's um, okay. fabulous mm -hmm. work and intelligence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I guided things, mm -hmm. but, you know, he was the engine. Yeah, yeah. So that's an example of something mm -hmm. that has taken off. Right, okay. Um, so, I mean, I can see that, I mean, you've been working 40 years, I mean, how do you maintain the level of energy and or, or the the drive? I mean, what I mean, surely something. I mean, for somebody to work like this, you know, work hard like this for forty years without losing the fire, losing you know energy. What what there must be some driver inside you. What do you, what is the driver? Part of it is curiosity, right? Part of it is working on new problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was still doing the same stuff I was doing mm -hmm. when you were there yeah. 35 years ago, right. it would be pretty grim. Right. So yeah. you find really new mm -hmm. problems, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you get interested, and you sit back, and, and, and you go to conferences, mm -hmm. and you hear these things, and you say, well, that's sort of an interesting idea. Or you, or you get a new idea mm -hmm. 
that gets for some reason a, a talk will sort of make you think yeah. of something over here. But still, there was no chance of burnout. But you, it was well, uh, uh, there was no no sign of burnout. So you kept up because some people do go through burnout. They because, cannot continue because, the same energy level. Be, well, yeah, I don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I I I would describe myself as a um, as an athlete, mm -hmm. as a runner. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep in shape, yeah, you're okay. Yeah. As soon as you stop, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. soon as you stop doing yeah. it, mm -hmm. you can't. Right. You can't keep in shape. Yeah. 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 And that's right. For some reason, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's. I can feel mm -hmm. that the energy isn't there. That is it. That was there mm -hmm. ten years ago. Right. Okay. Now research. It's certainly the kind of research that you have done with remote sensing and modeling, global modeling and so on, is collaborative by definition. And I know that you have a international network of people that you work yeah. with. How important is that network for the kinds of things that you've achieved? Uh, you know, um, you know, how, and how do you cultivate, uh, you know, this network? Well, um, first of all, I think it's really, really important for me mm -hmm. to to keep, to have a network like that, to remain inquisitive and to right, right, exchange okay. ideas. Even that, yeah, okay. Right. And I think it's, I've been, <coughs> I've been, um, I tended to be very open. Mm -hmm. Right, you, to, to be collaborative, you have to all be open. You have to be open. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who, mm -hmm. Who aren't very open? Yeah, and, and it so, closes collaboration right away. And, well, it closes the collaboration, mm -hmm. but it also closes them from from ideas in a sense. Absolutely, yeah. And so that has been very important. So you are totally happy always to give credit and get credit. This yeah. is the way. First thing I always say when I get all these mm -hmm. awards mm -hmm. is I have to thank my students mm -hmm. and my postdocs. Right, right, yeah. yeah. That they've been mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. uh, central mm -hmm. to everything. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, I've had, what, 32 mm -hmm. PhD students? Okay, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. almost that many mm -hmm. postdocs. Right. Um, okay, so let's, um, uh, we talked about the, uh, the, your connections to your students, your collaborators internationally, um, that uh, keeps the energy level going and keeps the excitement going. Uh, how important, uh, you know, you know, uh, to your work is, you know, having a, uh, you know, family and, and um, you know, how, 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 how does it impact on, on, on the work? Or how, how does work impact on family? Well, so um, we can start this off in a variety of ways. Yeah. Um, I think, well, in the when my kids were small. Yeah. And so we're talking about mm -hmm. in the eighties and early nineties. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the universities were in some ways much simpler. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Summertime, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. University shut down mm -hmm. uh, after graduation. There weren't people uh, demanding of your time, mm -hmm. um, and you could go off. We would go off for a month yeah. to Europe. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I told, when we went to to uh, Institute of Hydrology. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we went to uh, to Italy. We could go. Maybe there'd be a conference we would go mm -hmm. to, we, mm -hmm. and we take them all there. We yeah. would, mm -hmm. or we go back to Vancouver. We right. spent time. Mm -hmm. uh, even in the winter. Now, when you get a hundred emails a day, it's impossible. Right. And I think the quality, mm -hmm. the pressures on mm -hmm. faculty today yeah. have increased. Right. And I think it's gotten harder and harder. Mm -hmm. For them to 
build up programs that are, are outward yeah. looking because mm -hmm. it's just it's just too hectic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know it. Um, I I'm not particularly mm -hmm. happy. I think it's harder, mm -hmm. probably harder, to get research funding now. I, I've never had difficulty getting mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. funding. I've gotten mm -hmm. a lot, but it's like. It's like a constant, yeah. You know, right, right. You know, and I, I, I think it's before it was. You know, you would write a, some proposals, mm -hmm. and you would go there, and now you know, if you're going to have a big program, mm -hmm. it's um, crank, crank. So it's crank. a it's now become such a heavy burden on you that you just keep keep on talking about thinking about work all the time. No, I, uh, I think there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I, I, if you're in a tier one university, mm -hmm. tier one, yeah, that's right. If you're in a tier one mm -hmm. research university, mm -hmm. and you want to have an impact, right, right, okay, you have mm -hmm. one impact. Yeah, you need to have good students. You need to pay the students or yeah. postdocs. Right. You need to come to um, conferences. You need to, you know, part of my job mm -hmm. is to present. My students' research. Yes, that's right. So that someone will say, "Oh, this student of Eric Woods is doing really fantastic work." So that that student, it helps them as they in, launch in their, their career, career. Mm -hmm. launches them in their career. Right, right. And uh, you know, if you don't do that, it's mm -hmm. it's you know, if people stay home. They never they they yeah. they never promote their students and never yeah. do anything. Right. Then nobody ever knows yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. So it's it's to me it's it's I think it's gotten I think it's gotten more complicated. You okay. Know. okay. I mean it's yeah. So you um, along the way you actually mentioned a, a lot of names of people that have been that come into your life yeah. and uh, helped you in your career. Um, so uh, are, are there some really key influences? That you can you, you can mention, you know, that guided or that helped along the way, or mentors. Um. Most of most there there are some people mm -hmm. who have um, have had senior mentors. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. whether it's been their supervisor right. or someone similar mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. and I didn't ever really have, I don't really felt I ever had any of those type. Mm -hmm. So I had to build up mentors like Dennis Lettenmeyer mm -hmm. and, uh, and other people mm -hmm. who you could re rely on. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. To you know, give you advice, help you out. Um, there's I mean, I I can't really. Mm -hmm. uh, I know if I list some, I will forget some. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, uh, certainly Dennis is mm -hmm. yes yeah. is right. has been an important friend mm -hmm. for yeah thirty years. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done very much. We did a lot of research in the beginning, but we haven't done very much mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. last so long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mainly because the research grants got so small that we yeah. couldn't, and our salaries got so big that you couldn't yeah. divide right, it. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's, that's another problem. It's another problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, and there are some areas that he didn't mm -hmm. wasn't interested in getting into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Initially, he was not at all interested in remote sensing. Right. Oh, okay. As an example. Mm -hmm. he did right. Mm -hmm. So, but still, for for. Young people looking at this thing, you know, if you're from India or from, you know, I mean, I always wonder how they can get through this thing and get recognized for the work and unless some somebody recognizes, sees their work and, and gives them a, a, a little bit of a step up, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's very you, difficult. You need, mm -hmm. that's right, you, you, and it's hard to do that without spending time away from home. Yes. Right. Okay. That's right. 
You can't mm -hmm. you can't sit so let's pick um, uh, an Indian mm -hmm. uh, if unless they start going yes. to conferences. That's right. And meeting people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, people don't know about you. Right. You know. That's the uh, that's the, the, the the best way to that's, get, that's get recognized way. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any comments on the research culture that that we have uh, got into in the last 30, 40 years? Um, heavily depend on funding. Uh, if you don't have funding, you have, there's nothing you can do. Uh, uh, the competition. Um, so is the culture, the research culture that we have, is it healthy? Are there things that we can do to improve? Food. Well, one of the things that's happened mm -hmm. is these large mm -hmm. integrative right projects. Right, it started in Europe with with you know uh, uh, big programs, mm -hmm. big administration. Yeah, small <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Lots of mm -hmm. lot lots of researchers mm -hmm. from different universities all getting. Nickels and dimes. The European, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, European, the, the uh, yeah, the various European, European Union project, yeah. You know whether mm -hmm. they, the, mm -hmm. uh, and NSF in, in the U.S. has gone to that right model. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I can't say that I particularly mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's some good things. I've never really. So instead of going for individual PI. Let research. They're going for almost yeah. You know the water there. sustainability project, right, right? Right. Okay. Of which you have not only mm -hmm. the hydrologists and the climatologists, yeah. but the sociologists yeah. and yeah. and and um, you know uh, metrics to mm -hmm. evaluate, mm -hmm. like um, you know, uh, is the K twelve going to be an important uh, metric. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not very strong. Uh, so X doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. That's right. Um, yeah. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I've never, I've never really participated mm -hmm. in those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, um, you know, generally I've been very lucky. I've gotten a lot of funding from NASA and NOAA right. that have been mm -hmm. one or two PI yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. So I think for young people, mm -hmm. getting involved in these integrated process mm -hmm. is hard because yeah. they don't they're not necessarily known. Right. They need some help. Mm -hmm. Or mentoring, or something to do it. Now, there's lots of examples we know who have been. I mean, uh, Megan Connor at yes. Illinois yeah. has has done that. But I know of people, very good people, mm -hmm. who they have some of that young people. They're getting very frustrated with the uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the difficulty in getting funding. Right. Right. And um, I th I think. You know that's going to drive some of the some good people away from the universities. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's I, I want to add one other yeah, thing go to this, that. Please. Yeah. Um, a lot. Some of these programs. Yeah. Want results that are very place specific. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know, what is climate change impacts in in northern Germany? Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't have the the program or, or the funding mm -hmm. project doesn't have an opportunity to look at it in a broader sense. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times you will get these very place place based localized based, yeah. and and that help that does not help them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in sort of giving a, yeah. a broader perspective. Right. Okay. And you see these papers in the literature, you know. Uh, Climate change in Lake yeah, X and the Tibetan Plateau. That's right. Yeah. 
There's a lot of that. There's, 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 a, there's a lot of this. Yeah. And that's being driven again by the programs. Programs, yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you want to go into this, but, you know, over your 40 year career, you know, are, are there milestones that, of, you know, work that transformed the field? It could be your papers or it could be other people's papers that, that you that um, that you can mention. Well, there are certain things which have really transformed our field. Mm -hmm. Nobody today thinks twice about um, uh, land surface models that right. tie in that are mm -hmm. have energy, and mm -hmm. we think of now processes. Mm -hmm. I mean, remote sensing data sets mm -hmm. at very high resolution. Yeah. Uh, are widely available mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, computing. Yeah, computing. The, the, the mm -hmm. ability to, right. to, to compute at scales that we never imagined. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. All of those have transformed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, the field. It's, uh, you know, we've taken advantage of some of them. Yeah. Some we haven't been. Mm -hmm. I would say if there's any, if, you know, you say, oh, you've done all these, these wonderful transformative things. Mm -hmm. And I look and I say, but I, there's all these things I haven't done. Mm -hmm. You're right. Okay. You know, there's, there's, uh, I haven't spent much time really looking at um, some basic hypotheses and, mm -hmm. In theory, I, I feel that maybe in some ways I've been, I've, I've um, taken advantage of of certain opportunities. So you see that you there, there are some missed opportunities. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, right. there's missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. um, so I mean, you know, it's 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 you know, you walk down the buffet. Yeah. Right. You know, you can't put everything on the plate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you want more than one thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So when, yeah. when you go around, you know, listen to yeah. papers presented at EGU here or posters and so on, um, uh, do you get a sense of um, sameness, repetition, or are, are, do you see really interesting signs of new ideas coming through uh, in, in, in meetings? Well, I, I think you see a combination. You right. see a few mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. uh, that you look at and say, boy, that's a really mm -hmm. nice what they did. Right. right. Or maybe that mm -hmm. this is very insightful. I, I can see a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of, mm -hmm. of yeah. sameness. Right. Okay. Uh, look at there's um, how many? There's probably what four thousand hydrologists here. Yeah, correct. Today mm -hmm. for this meeting, mm -hmm. how many of those four thousand hydrologists are going to have a big impact? That's right. I mean, just by numbers. Mm -hmm. Can um, you? Can, do you have the sense of who, who? You know, can you? Is it predictable who will be? The, the leaders in ten years' time, or is it, you, that the leaders will some come from nowhere? It's some, kind of I think you see some. I think you 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 see some that have huge potential right. in doing well. Mm -hmm. And the question is, mm -hmm. are they going to put in the work and effort mm -hmm. to fulfill their to, potential, to fulfill their potential, right, or not? Mm -hmm. And you know, people listening to this can think of it as two different ways. Well, are they going to go kill themselves and have a lousy life because they have to mm -hmm. do it? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, that's one way to look at that yeah. statement. Right, right. You know, um, or are they going to, you know, flourish because... You know, everything will fall into place. Well, right. nothing ever falls into place completely easily. Yeah. Easily, yeah. There's always 
trade-offs. Yeah. You know, so it's like looking at young artists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is this young artist going to be fantastic, mm -hmm. or is that young artist going to be fantastic? So, coming, thinking about falling into into place, I, I have heard criticism of hydrology. I mean, I, I just want your your perspective yeah. of of how hydrology has evolved over the last forty years that you have been active in. You know that uh, we've we've learned a lot, we've done a lot. Hydrology is not the same as it was 40 years ago. I can, I can easily see it. Is there a danger of the field specializing and specializing? And, and I have heard a word called canalizing, in other words, sort of, uh, and not living up to its full potential. Is, is there a danger of that? I have, if, if it is, how do we bring it back together again, we make it correct? Oh. Look at there will be people that will come along mm -hmm. and have an idea that will pull some stuff together. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's gonna. It, it'll. It'll happen. I mean, I. I think that there's is that important. Is that, is that is that important that that from time to time that some people come along and and are able to bring things together. For the, for the good of science, for the good of hydrology? Well, it's always good in every field that, right. that someone will, mm -hmm. or, or cross over and mm -hmm. bring things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it needs to be forced. I mm -hmm. think it will naturally happen. It will happen. You can just say, well, there isn't anyone standing mm -hmm. here today doing it, mm -hmm. but tomorrow there might be someone. Yeah, so because, uh, I mean... We, I have faith in our creativity. Right. We talked about teaching... Um, in spite of all the things that we have learned in the last 40 years, all the advances we have made in understanding, um, look at the books that we are using to teach. <laughs> One is worse than the other. <laughs> so how do we fix that problem? You wait, we, for, you wait for someone. Somebody to you wait for someone to come along. Right. You have to wait for someone to come along. Yeah. You, know, you had never thought of writing a book of that kind, or no. is that something that you feel is your duty? You know, there's two people in this world. Right. They're long distance runners, right. marathon runners. Yes. Or they're sprinters. Yes. I tend to be a sprinter. You tend, okay, okay, that's the interesting. You know, mm -hmm. um, projects mm -hmm. that take a long sustained mm -hmm. activity, and I, and I don't see the the research activities I've done as being long sustained activities. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. I see them as even though they now, when you look back, they all fit into a nice. Uh, yes, when you look back, <laughs> yeah. they all do. But they're made up of a bunch of papers and right. and people on. Mm -hmm. But sitting down mm -hmm. and writing mm -hmm. a book, mm -hmm. um, it takes a level. Dedication. Yeah, it takes a level of being able to set aside mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all sorts of things mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I haven't been able to set aside. Mm -hmm. Okay. I may have ideas for books, but I don't have time for books. Right. Okay. But yeah. and and, and yeah. in some ways it would be, mm -hmm. you know, that's the way it is. You know. Yeah. You know, right. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, so I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing <clears throat> from you is that that hey, I have a personality of my own, and I do the work that I do that fits my personality. That you don't try to, yeah, yeah that. I think it, I think to be successful, you have to do that. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. so I mean, there's a, there's an example. You talk about missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would it be nice to have? A really nice, insightful book. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I see people who've written books, mm -hmm. which they pulled together stuff and thrown it together, and they have no. Um, they may no, have done more harm. No, than, no, they may have done no, more harm than. Yeah. But no impact. No impact. No impact. Yeah. Or people who've taken their thirty years of. Class like, notes, notes and, then, and arrange a little. I don't think that's what we need. Right. Right. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. to really do something significant, mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. Okay. 
I want you to reflect on hydrology as a as a, as a field and and, and um, how much enjoyment uh, that it has brought to you. I can't complain. It's been a, it's been it's been a fantastic career. Mm -hmm. It's been a fantastic career. It has um, made uh, a lot of creativity, mm -hmm. a lot of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I tell my kids, you, you can drive down a road someplace anywhere in the world, stop the car and throw me out, and I'll pick myself up and mm -hmm. dust off the, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, the sleeves, and I'll say, oh, I know someone over there. Right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, we have, we have friends, mm -hmm. you know, people, you and me and others. We have friends everywhere in the world. Yes, yes. And that's... that's Beautiful. That's a beautiful feeling. That's a beautiful feeling. Yeah. What final question? There'll be young graduate students, early career researchers, listen to this, look at your success, your progress, um, look at the enjoyment, the hard work that when you do the, that when you do this kind of career. Starting from now, looking to the future of next forty years, what? advice would you give them? You need the passion. Right. Mm -hmm. You need the passion mm -hmm. to sustain the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to have a, an open, to be open, open to your students, open to your colleagues, create mm -hmm community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important because I think that's what makes it enjoyable. Right. Okay. You know, putting my going into a room, into a cell mm -hmm. and working to me isn't very interesting. Right. Okay. So okay. that's I would say that that, that, that you need that, that passion. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Okay. So Eric Thank you very much. It was really enjoyable uh, interviewing you in this sort of uh, in this kind of atmosphere here. But uh, I really enjoyed uh, listening to you, and and uh, I hope I hope that together we brought out something uh, about you and about your career, about your life that uh, people did not know. I hope I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, there's there are lessons that people will take from this and uh, so for that reason I want to thank you and uh, yeah I wish you good luck in whatever you do in the future. So, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you Siva. I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to, to interview me. Right. Um, you've, you've been a student of mine but more importantly you've been a good friend of mine okay. much longer than you were a student and, That's I, right. and I appreciate your friendship deeply. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.